What's up, guys? Bang, bang. It is lunch money time on a Friday. You know what that means. There's some trillionaire energy in the air. I'm here with the beautiful, intelligent, plenty, Eva Lova, Marinova, Pompliano, P-I-M-P. Don't forget that lunch money is now sponsored by BlockFi. BlockFi has three products. You can buy and sell crypto. You can deposit crypto and earn up to 8.6% APY. In, in an interest-bearing account. Interest-bearing exactly. account. Interest-bearing account. It's not a crypto account. It's an interest-bearing account. That's crypto exchange. We already talked about that one. And the third product is that you can deposit crypto and take out a U.S. dollar loan against your crypto collateral. Go get a BlockFi account. If you have a BlockFi account today, you can get on the wait list for a credit card that pays you in Bitcoin rewards. Go and sign up at BlockFi.com slash POMP. BlockFi.com slash POMP. You can go to BlockFi.com slash POMP. What's up? I'm still, I'm still really white. I need a tan. Okay. <clears throat> Former Trump economic advisor Kevin Hassett broadly supports Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion rescue package as a way to keep the coronavirus ravaged economy afloat. So he said they've thrown a lot of stimulus at it, but I think we need to be risk averse. I don't know what that means. Listen. Ooh. My voice just cracked. Was that a crack? That was a crack. Did my voice just crack? That was a crack. It's better than a yawn. All right. So listen, if they want to print and create another $1.9 trillion in a stimulus package, they're going to do it regardless of what we all think. They literally do not care what we think. But three things are going to happen. One, they're going to punish savers. Two, they're going to inflate asset prices. And three is they are going to run a marketing campaign as to why the digital decentralized financial system is a better alternative because people cannot change the rules in the new system without most people agreeing. She just yawned. That is what you get when you sleep. I slept 10 hours last night. What's up? Trillionaire energy. But for the stimulus package, at some point, we got to knock it off. They're not going to. But let's go. Open the economy. Let people run their businesses. And you won't have to print all this money. But again, the financial incentive is politicians are going to do it. They're going to try to mitigate he- short-term <laughs> pain. And they are going to devalue the dollar. And they're going to be handing out cash, cash, cash. Joe Biden's going to be in the streets just throwing it like he's at a strip club. And he's just going to be handing it to everybody. And what he means when he says open the economy, I've seen the comments, he means do it safely, wear the masks. If you're old, if you're at risk, stay inside, stay home, do your job from there if you can. Are people mad that I've been saying that? Well, it's like, yes, if you open the economy, then the virus will shoot back up. That's not necessarily true. Well... If you if you actually look at the places where the economy is open, it doesn't necessarily have the worst uh, situation. But I think it does. It doesn't. Uh, but what I will say again is, if you're old, if you're sick, or if you're scared, even if you don't have any actual issues, but you're just nervous, you should sit at home. That's fine. Like that shouldn't be a problem. The whole thing, though, is for those that are young, let them go. Let them go safely with masks. True, and social distancing. Go ahead next. Um, Janet Yellen is clarifying some of her comments around crypto. She thinks it's important that the U.S. considers the benefits of cryptocurrency alongside the potential for misuse. She said, I think we need to look closely at how to encourage their use of legitimate activities while curtailing their use for malign and illegal activities. If confirmed, I intend to work closely with the Federal Reserve Board and the other (coughs) federal banking and securities regulators on how to implement an effective regulatory framework for those and other fintech innovators. Why are you pointing out? Because I thought that went off. The yawn yawn was coming. I was like, so what do we think? Uh, I think that Janet Yellen, thank you, Janet. I appreciate you for Uh clarifying your thoughts. I think that this is a much more nuanced and more appropriate answer that we (laughs) should look at the positives along with the negatives. I really hope that you are listening to all the feedback on the Internet because that will embolden people to continue to share that feedback. But the U.S. dollar is still the choice currency of all criminals around the world. All right. So I have a very interesting, this is a very interesting article. Bank of America is giving $750 in cash bonuses to staffers in the U.S. who earn less than 100K. But for employees who make between 100K and 500K annually, they'll get 150 to 750 restricted stock units. So one group is getting cash. The other group is getting stock. Well, I'll even go a step further. 
and then it's over four years. Oh, it's over four years. The, oh, the, the vesting, the stock awards will be paid out over four years. Listen, I like the fact that companies want to pay employees more. I like the fact that they want to even give some upside in equity. But you're telling me $750 bonus? Sure, maybe it has a little bit of an impact. But if you're making ninety thousand dollars, or a hundred, yeah, up to a hundred thousand. But if you're making ninety thousand dollars a year and you get a seven hundred fifty dollar bonus, is that really that meaningful? But I just and don't. Why is one group getting stock and the other one is cash? That's another question. My guess is that there might be something around uh, the positions that they hold, but. What ends up occurring here just is... just sounds like somebody's getting screwed. Maybe we should not be making decisions on, based on income. And maybe we should be making decisions based on something else. I don't Wait, know. So is it, is but, it... but I, but I want to be very clear. Everyone will always critique how they do something like this. But you have to give kudos that they're doing yeah, it yeah, at all. That's true. So it's but, a positive that they're doing it, but then people will all debate the, no, no, no. the nuances. I'm not asking. I'm, I'm saying it's a good thing, but why is there? Why isn't everybody getting stock options? Well, I don't know, but Bank of America has been giving employees a thousand dollars since 2017 as bonuses, but they stopped it, I believe, during the pandemic. So oh. they're bringing it back, but it's actually lower than it was pre-pandemic. Why would they stop it during the pandemic? Well, because everyone's worried about cash. Yeah, so give them the cash. No, the, the, the company is, is worried about the cash. Um, wait, but I have a question. Is yes. it better to get $750 in cash or $750 in stock units over vesting over four years? Well, it depends if the stock goes up or goes down, right? Right. The other thing that's very interesting is Bank of America, I believe, was the first or one of the early banks. They moved to a minimum wage of $20 at Bank of America. Nice. <clears throat> and they, I think they did that last year or the year before. Um, and so, again, oh, okay, they're trying to do the right things. And I think that like their heart's in the right place when you look at some of the uh, programs they're putting in place. It's just, of course, people are going to always debate, you know, what's the right decision, what's not, whatever. Tesla chief and billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk on Thursday took to Twitter to promise a hundred million dollar prize for development of the best technology to capture carbon dioxide emissions. I literally saw people on Twitter complaining about this. I, I literally saw journalists being like, oh my God, I can't believe that everyone is saying such positive things about this. We don't even know the details yet. <laughs> Like, uh, like I, what? Never. The man literally said he's going to give a hundred million dollars to somebody who comes up with innovation. But the critics might say he's just doing it for positive press. Who he, cares? Well, he's not serious about it. He tweeted it. Yeah, but he might not do it. What do you mean? Just because you tweet it doesn't mean you'll do it. It, okay, so guess what? If he doesn't do it later, then write a hit Should piece. Should I tweet? No, uh -huh. I'm going to give $100 million so if somebody reads my uh, horoscope. Yes, and and then when you don't do it, I'm going to write a hit piece and be like, you didn't do it. it. It's like we live in this world where literally everyone wants to critique everything before it even happens. It's like somebody comes out and they're like, I'm going to start a business. And then somebody's like, oh my God, but if the business doesn't work, what a bad person. Honestly, like, wait for the business to fail. That's, that's literally how I used to think. And he was like, you should do it and then figure it out. Yeah, what, what, like, it's just everyone loves to be a critic. But I, I, don't see, I don't see anyone that's writing those pieces giving away any money. I don't see any of them. So when they start okay. to give away their money, right. they then can critique other people who are giving away money. They can do what? Critique. Okay. Why did I say it wrong? No. Oh, all right. I'm being a negative Nancy. His um, his neck is a little bit. My neck. I've, I've been working for y'all all week. If people knew, yesterday I sat in the same chair from seven thirty until seven o'clock at night, and, and I, I had to hear everything. I, I recorded like six podcasts. <laughs> I did a bunch of meetings, all that stuff, like a little hermit crab over the computer. Go ahead. 
Okay. Um, Japan says it is committed to host the Olympics and it's denying reports of a cancellation. It is committed to open, have the opening ceremony for the games on July 23rd after having been postponed in March last year. I mean, I hope the Olympics happen, but like, is there going to be an audience? Like, it's going to be the saddest Olympics ever. Oh, we got four minutes. Uh, listen, my whole thing. Sorry, I got to do a call. I just, I realized the Olympics. I can do it myself. I can do lunch money by myself. The Olympics <laughs> is uh, a great time. I love the Olympics. America will win all the gold medals. Sorry for everybody else, uh, but just uh, win. Sorry. Sorry, we're the fastest, strongest, coolest, uh, sleekest swimmers in the world. It's not just swimming. Running. We know that. Right? Okay. All right, next. All right, it's lunch money time. Ask uh, lunch money time. Hashtag ask LM in the comments below. What you got for us? Oh, Daniel's back. Daniel Bellafront. Not Bellafonte. Bellafront. Pimp. Oh, that's for me. About media trust. Coming from a journalism background, what do you believe the roadmap roadmap back to cold hard facts and away from being first or spouting opinions could and should look like so there's this thing called the spj code of ethics that i think if more media organizations abided by we wouldn't have the problems that we have but somehow that's kind of like fallen to the wayside and now we're all bloggers and every we're offering our opinions left and right I actually think it's going to have to, I, I genuinely believe that the media acts as a mirror to society. I think when people are tired of all the extremist nonsense, then we're going to start moving back towards the middle. And I think the our media will reflect that because it won't just be like, oh, they only want to read about Trump, 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 Trump. Like it'll be a little bit more calm and moderate and independent and ethical. But I think it needs to come from society first. I don't think it's possible. He doesn't think it's possible. You can't, you can't have a corrupt or a uh, non-corrupt, unbiased organization when the people that the organization is made up of are corrupt and biased. Well, but my point is, if our consumption habits as a society change, those organizations will be forced to change the types of people they hire. They started hiring the bloggers because BuzzFeed was killing it. <clears throat> yes. It's okay. We can agree to this. The future of cold hard facts is not in organizations. It's in individuals. You're going to find the one individual that you trust, that you believe, that you say, hey, I agree with their read view the of the Read the Like read the profile.com. And that's who you're going to end up listening to. You're not gonna. Oh. You're not gonna subscribe to the institutional brand. You're gonna subscribe to the individual brand. Go ahead, guys. I saw you yesterday making fun of my big water bottle. So today I got a mini one. Okay, what's I'm very next? versatile. I normally have my own water bottle, but it, it, it's a long story. Okay, Brent KT. In each of your opinions, what is a worthwhile skill to learn for the future? Something relatively difficult that may take some time to educate yourself, but would pay dividends down the road. Um. Investing. Personal finance. Easy. That's it. Investing in personal finance. You'll always be able to have a living. You'll always be secure if you know how to take capital and grow it. See you guys See on ya. Monday. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi. So go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind <laughs> Polina. They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account. Or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.